Nagoya Audio presents J.K. Haru is a Sex Worker in Another World Written by Ko Hiratori Read by Majori22 Chapter 1 J.K. Haru's Job Hunt The funniest thing that happened when I came to this world was the time I burst out laughing about how they use grass for contraception here and said, yikes, do you get high? And Madame replied, you do not, with a completely straight face. You've never heard of love your grass, she said. Every herbalist around here carries it. You must be from awfully far out in the country. I can't believe I got called a bumpkin by some in a world in which not only are there no internet or phones, much less smartphones, but also no electricity or cars. To all my Tokyo peeps, I'm seriously sorry. She totally dissed our metropolis. But in this world, apparently this place is urban. Just a bit ago, an orc kidnapped some kids, but I guess this is a big city, even with things like that going on just outside it. I've never heard of that sort of thing, except on the world's astonishing news, but okay. Still, I have to get along with these fantasy people from now on. Otherwise, I'm Orc Chow. This is no time to crack jokes. I have to pay attention to what she's saying. Before you sleep with the customer, take some of the gooey paste made by crushing this grass and stick it way up inside you. A fingerful is enough. When you're done, scrape it out along with the cum. Clean up and reapply before the next customer. Madame was a lady beautiful and mature enough that it made sense to call her Madame. And so elegant, you never guessed she was the owner of a brothel. It was sexy how she said cum, like it was nothing. This goes without saying, but she was so used to explaining the process that she didn't blush or anything. That's when it sunk in. Man, I'm really going to be working as a prostitute. If you don't know about contraception, have you even ever slept with a man before? Yeah, uh, about ten of them. Oh, so you've been around quite a bit for someone so young. How old are you? Nineteen? Just about twenty? You don't have to lie, you know. We have girls as young as 14 working here. Oh, I see. Sorry. Where I'm from, this sort of work is prohibited for people under 18. Madame's eyes grew large. And you managed to sleep with 10 people despite that? Well, well, she chuckled. Actually, I was an escort for a little while during middle school. But I quit right away because my friend, who I trusted, tricked me. Or, I guess I should say, used me. Aside from that, I only did it with boyfriends, and I was never the type to cheat. Even so, I've probably slept with more than ten guys, but, hey, it's a pain to try and remember them all, so ten's fine. Anyhow, as such, the only job I felt like I could maybe do when I got thrown into this unfamiliar world was sell sex. I never thought I'd do this kind of thing again, and I seriously want to tell my mom and dad I'm sorry, but this time, it's to make a living. I don't have a choice. Okay, so you're hired. You seem like you'll be popular. Welcome to Blue Cat Nocturne, Haru. Happy to be here. I'll introduce you to everybody. So for today, just hop out of the pub downstairs. You can start taking customers once you learn our rules. Okay. And so, I became a sex worker in another world. I totally miss the high school life I used to have, but I died and got sent to this world. I didn't hear anything about a way to get back, so for now, I just have to do my best to survive. The high school girl Haru Koyama's life restarted in a world like a dumb otaku phone game, and she quietly transformed into a working girl. That's the kind of sad way my life at the brothel started, but I got used to it pretty much right away. Every day I waitress at the pub, flirt, and occasionally flash my panties at the customers. Sleep with the ones who ask, wash up quick, and get back to the pub. We're open till late. I thought it would be like a soap land back in Japan, so maybe I could just wait around in bed till someone showed up. But in this world, a brothel is practically the same thing as a pub. Of course they have normal bars too, but usually drinks and girls come off as a set. I mean, I suppose it's a logical way to get your kicks. This world is the middle of fucking nowhere. And there's a rampaging demon lord, monsters, and whatnot. The city we work in is right on the front line of this war against the demon lord's army. So there are lots of soldiers and stray fighters, as well as business owners targeting said soldiers and fighters. We're never hard up for customers. Booze, 
girls and the sloppy laughter of men. Yes, it's hopping tonight as usual. I'm telling you, there's no monster my two-handed axe can't cut. You can ask anyone. They all know it's true. Really? Wow. And your muscles are so big. Can I touch them? Even that kind of pointless table chatter earns me some change. And actually, I have my fair share of regulars. Sometimes they take me out for something good to eat. I'm even financially stable enough now that I can buy new underwear with my tips. This month, I'm number seven in sales ranking. Pretty good for a newbie, considering there are 18 girls, right? Well, one is a housewife who only comes in twice a week, and some have day jobs, but still, not too shabby. Oh, time's almost up. What should we do? Want to keep going upstairs? Already that time, huh? You're an interesting kid, but too young for my cock. Later. <laughs> Lately, though, it's been bugging me that I can't seem to break through the number five wall. The month I went on sale, I did gangbusters, but after reaching five, I've been floating around six or seven forever, even on good days. I'm still new and I have room to grow, but I was pretty popular in school and have some confidence in my looks. I secretly thought I'd be the one to surpass the five goddesses, so I'm a bit disappointed in myself. I guess it's my boobs. They must be too small. That's what I was thinking when a frown on my face wiping down tables when someone called me by my last name, Koyama. In this world, commoners don't have surnames, unless you count mentioning where you're from, so there's only one person who knows my last name, Seiji Chiba. He was in the same class as me until we got transported to this world together. Chiba, I told you I'm Haru at the shop. Say it right. Uh, oh yeah, Haru, right. If that's what you want me to call you, I'll try. So, what'll it be? Is the bar fine? Uh, sure. My usual seat. Where's that again? I, uh, in the corner. Okay, party of one. Chiba was his usual nervous self with a weird smile on his face. The city was full of adventurers, people who exterminated monsters and went exploring for a living. And Chiba was one of them. Every time I saw him, his face gradually looked more manly. But the fact that he was a weirdo, and you could never tell what he was thinking, didn't change. I've never liked weirdos. According to someone who went to the same junior high as him, there was a period of time when he was famous for his preteen delusions. I guess he was a real loser. Lately, since we got here, he's dyed his hair red and styles it rock hard. But it really doesn't look good on him. Or more like, I can only see the bizarrely flipped up bangs as a carp cap. Ugh. He wears a red breastplate and shoulder armor, but they look just like him. He wears a red breastplate and shoulder armor, but they just make him look like an anatomy model. Maybe he looks cool according to otaku standards, but I don't really get it. Or more like, I don't think he realizes he's still got a face full of pimples. Until we came to this world, I never gave this guy the time of day. To be blunt, he was basically part of the classroom's furniture. While prepping for the school festival, we were in the same shopping group, and he was the one who noticed the runaway truck first. If he would have just warned me, maybe I could have dodged it, but instead he ran the hell over and tackled me. As a result, we both died and got sent to this other world. Of course, there's no point in saying that now. I might have gotten run over no matter who noticed first, so I didn't bring it up. H Haru, did you get a haircut? Uh, yeah. It was getting in the way, so I cut it off. Looks weird, right? I'm pretty sure I explained that I wanted it about chin length and shaggy, but apparently that didn't get through to the stylist, so I ended up with something like an old school bob. Well, as long as it's short. I don't know if it's because people ride horses here or what, but there are lots of dumbasses who grab girls' hair and pull it like reins when they're doing it from behind. Isn't that stupid barbaric? Anyhow... That's why I chopped off my long hair, even though I liked it. Chiba looked at my head, then my face, and all the way down to my feet with a smirk. That day I was wearing my short black dress. The only other one I have is orange and a bit longer, so Chiba should have been used to seeing it. It's not weird. It's like Yufumin from Saradon. Kind of cool. Huh? She's a sub-heroine from one of last year's biggest anime. Despite being a lesser protagonist, I'm pretty sure she was the most popular. She's a maid who serves the main heroine. Hmm, do you like maids, Shiva? N no I don't mean me. I mean, like, on the net. 
she's a lolly, so of course she's popular online. I'm not really into that. I mean, I don't really get it. But I guess in terms of, like, her personality, I appreciate her bravery. Not that I hate the way she looks or anything, but there are lots of other cool characters. Uh, okay. Fumin has blue hair, so if you dyed yours, you'd look more like her. Also, she usually speaks really politely, but every once in a while she scolds a protagonist like, You can't do that! Revealing what she really thinks. They say online that in those moments she's acting like a mommy, and then the comments are full of babies. It's hilarious, and... I only started talking to Chiba since we came to this world, and I still don't really understand his topics of choice. Or like, he only rambles about boring stuff. All he brings up are anime I've never heard of, and when I try to adapt to his taste by mentioning Conan, he only makes fun of me. So I don't think he really wants to be my friend at all. Why did he have to jump on me back then? There was a weirdo princess right there. What's the plan for today? Want to go upstairs? Oh, uh, yeah, if, if you want, I guess. Or do you want to try a different girl? No, no, I'm not that kind of guy. Chiba got all bewildered and waved his hands, blushing. Honestly, I think it's way stranger to come to this kind of shop and pay money to sleep with your former classmate all the time, but whatever. Well, I need to take good care of my regulars, and in the beginning it was me who asked him to buy me, so I took him upstairs. He looked at my skirt the entire way. Chiba, you undress too. Huh? You won't take my clothes off for me? Aren't you guys here to provide that sort of service? Sure, just put your arms up. After I stripped my panties off, I took off all of Chiba's weird putsy clothes. Meanwhile, he was ogling my boobs and pussy to get his uncut baby cock hard. I laid him down on the bed and sat next to him. When I started rubbing him, he said, Do it with your mouth, in the quietest voice. <laughs> When I pretended I hadn't heard, he begged, with your mouth, with your mouth, in a voice like an old geezer about to kick the bucket. So I gave him a little lick. Uh, he moaned like a girl and arched his back, squirming. He's the type who will suddenly come in my mouth if I lick him too much. I stuck a finger in the jar of boiled and cooled yog nectar. It's like lube. Got my lovely pink pussy all wet and shoved the love ya grass, contraceptive herb paste up inside. Hey, can I put it in? I can't wait any longer. Chiba's eyes relaxed with his smile and he nodded. Sure, I guess. If I said that sort of thing to any other customer, they'd get pissed and be like, Don't cut corners with me. I love amateurs. They're so easy. How do you want to do it? Me on top again? Yeah, however you like to do it. This is what's annoying about Chiba. When I'm on top, I get worn out. I don't like it. But he always wants me up there. He doesn't even drink, but I guess he intoxicates himself, because he said with these spacey eyes, When you're with me, it doesn't have to be work. We can have real sex. The first time we did it, he didn't know how to thrust, so I took pity and showed him. In his mind, that means I was really getting off on him. Apparently, he was so inexperienced that he had to come here and pay 70 rubers. That's money here, to buy me. He had mumbled something about having a girlfriend in junior high, but that had to be a lie. He was a virgin, and even now that he's not, he still has no interest in learning how to fuck a woman. He just clams up and lets it happen. Guys can be dead lays too. He doesn't want to have sex, he wants to jerk off. He comes here for masturbation, not the real thing. Of course, we sex workers have to give these sort of customers proper service too. I spread my legs wide and showed him my pussy. In this world, shaving your pubes is good manners for both guys and girls. But even though Chiba's always staring at my smoothness, he thinks shaving is a pain, so he doesn't do it. That's annoying to me, so I just get in as fast as possible. Mmm, mm, you're so big. Ooh. I give his foreskinned elementary schooler PP a squeeze. When everything is on point, he'll come just from that, but I guess I didn't give him enough oral because he just bit his lip and took it. Can I move? Hey, can I move? I didn't wait for his reply and started rocking my hips. I thrust out my breast to be all, hey, I'm sexy. Chiba grabbed the sheets and pointed his toes, stiff as a corpse in deep freeze, and started mumbling dirty talk. Oh man, I'm doing it with Koyama. Wish I could tell Sagichi and the guys, he panted. Apparently, he really wanted to go back to our world and tell his otaku friends he had sex with me. 
Conversely, if it ever got out to my friends that I slept with Chiba, I'd probably get kicked out of our line group. When I remembered school, I got hella sad. I had friends and a boyfriend, and it was so much fun. So why do I gotta be in this old-timey fairy tale world fucking this weirdo? Koyama, you're making such a sexy face. Oh, my cock is getting off. This, this guy even knows that until I came to this world, I was going out with a hot, J-soul type soccer player from the class next door. He was getting off on that fact, like he stole me from him or something. You really think I would let that happen, dumbass? But I bit my lip and made a sexy face. Yeah, feels so good. You're the one who feels the best. Koyama, he panted. That's good. Keep feeling it. Forget about work. Show me your true self. Oh, if only I could. I want to forget all of this, including you, and go home. But this is Haru Koyama's job now. Gotta make a living, so I have no choice. I put a finger in my mouth and with unfocused eyes told him, I'm gonna come. Oh, yeah, come for me. Oh, I'm... I'm... I can't... And he came. Seventy rubers worth of semen paid straight to my pussy. How was it, Haru? He panted. Was it good? Uh, yeah, super good. How was it for you? Mm, okay. Really? I'm so glad. This little shithead. So, it doesn't have to be now, but... He said, eyeing my boobs as I mentally clicked my tongue. Wouldn't you want to quit this and do a different job? Like what? For example, like, be a slave? The fuck? What are you talking about? Er, uh, no, I mean, I guess they don't have a word for it here. I mean more like a maid. Why would I do that? Besides, who would hire me? Nah, I mean, if you wanted to quit this job, I could hire you. Huh? I mean, of course I wanted to quit, but this just sounded like Chiba wanted to hear me call him master. If he's being serious, he's a sicko. But I do kind of smell money. Do you really make that much as an adventurer? Well, as an adventurer, I'm kind of a special case. I told you before, didn't I, about my cheat abilities? Maybe I had heard it before, but I forgot. When I told him that honestly, he was like, What? Come on! And poked my boobs, which pissed me off. If people find out, they'd get jealous, so don't tell anybody, he said. All pleased with himself, and started to explain. In this world, there are invincible levels, skills, stats, and whatnot, and those are values that describe a person's abilities and strength. Skills are inborn and specific to an individual. They're really important. Even a higher level fighter can lose to someone lower, depending on their skills. Most people only have one of these precious abilities, and very few people put it into good use. Why? Like I said before, levels and skills are invincible. Even the person who has a skill doesn't know it. I should have remembered that much. After the runaway truck brought us here, we did get a lecture from an easygoing god. But Chiba was so hyped and getting all buddy-buddy with the god, even though it was our first time meeting him, that the mood was too corny and weird for me. So I let it go in one ear and out the other. That's why I didn't really remember. I guess the god liked Chiba and gave him a good skill. Actually, I have three. 16x experience points, immunity to status effects, and immunity to attack magic. In other words, I level up way faster than other people, and nothing besides physical attacks works on me. Frankly, I'm the strongest. Cool. Basically, the cheat is that he got all those really good terms right off the bat. He's a prodigy or whatever, thanks to that god. There's something pretty sneaky about that. Yeah. But that's kind of the template for other world stories. The protagonist, like me, gets summoned from another world and is unbeatable thanks to a cheat ability and contemporary knowledge. There are tons of anime and light novels like that, you know? Hilarious, right? Like I said, I don't know anything about anime, so I didn't get what was so funny. Chiba's definition of common sense is too different from mine. I've slept with him so many times, yet we still live in different worlds. Well, eventually you'll start hearing rumors about me, so then you'll understand. Lately, I've started appearing in the arena. You can brag that you know me if you want, Haru. <sighs> Sigh. I haven't caught up to the higher level guys yet, but I level up 16 times faster than normal, so I'll pass them up pretty soon. And I'm hunting monsters in a pretty deep area, so I have a decent income outside of prize money, too. Huh? 
so you're rich? Well, a bit. I did not expect that. Say that stuff up front. Does that mean that you want to add time? Huh? If you extend, I'll throw in something special for free. How about it? Uh, will you kiss me then? Blech, kiss? He's so persistent, but sure, I'll kiss you. This is for my sales numbers. I'm a sex worker who takes it like a pro when her shitty weirdo former classmate kisses her lips so hard it seems like they might swell up. That's my new lifestyle in this world. Mmm, smooch. Haru, mm, even if I defeat the demon lord and become a national hero, mm, smooch, I'll never abandon you, mm, he panted. Well, with this, maybe I'm getting closer to number six. I did a yawn between kisses and decided that the next day I would go eat something tasty.